sorts, of course, is that it's awfully hard uh, to say something different. So I thought instead I'd just tell you a story. Um, so uh, 35 years ago, and I will explain why I know it was 35 years ago, um, a very um, five foot nothing teacher, um, about 195, 100 pounds, uh, marched into a contact education uh, center uh, for a discussion about our at-risk youth um, who were sleeping too late in their beds and were not learning to read. And I said, oh, I think I can do something about that because that person was me. And we set up one of the most interesting projects across the street from now the Freshco um, in one of those uh, buildings, a little storefront education center. And for any of you who are old enough and have gray enough hair, you will remember that for $135 a week, um, a lip grant could be given by the federal government and any of us with very long hair, uh, feeling pretty hippie and with a good little glass on could go and do wondrous work uh, in neighborhoods. And so I had the opportunity coming out of teaching uh, of uh, inner city kids uh, to start uh, working with uh, some people at the corner of Dundas and Parliament uh, to begin a process of lifelong learning uh, for this community. And we started with youth um, and it was a real challenge uh, because as many of you will know, um, you know, some of us uh, would have to go and bang on their doors and threaten to come into their bedrooms uh, to pull them out um, and you had to be gutsy and you had to be able to say, hey you, out, oh, yep, here we're going. But what we noticed in the adult education, uh, the storefront education center, which was the first in Canada, was that adults really wanted to come in. And so as we are going out into Regent Park, um, often almost into the bedrooms, but I must say the young men were pretty quick once you got inside the apartment, uh, to bring them uh, to learn, uh, their moms, their dads, um, their older sisters and brothers were banging at our door to come in and, uh, and to get uh, uh, some learning too. Um, a lot of uh, these uh, adults uh, had not had the opportunities. They had not had people banging on the door and crazy women um, uh, trying to get into their bedroom to haul them off. Uh, but they, um, at 35 and 40, really 50, really wanted to learn and they saw the value of learning. And they also saw um, for their kids that that was the future um, of their lives. So. Um, all of those years ago, um, I worked with Harry Smaller, who actually uh, uh, finished off uh, uh, here in uh, in uh, Regent Park in the adult uh, or in the uh, uh, teacher training. Um, a lot of these uh, Faye, who started uh, was one of the first teachers at uh, at uh, Pathways, uh, was a teacher with me. We all worked together, and I think we learned. Uh, as someone said, uh, it really is about learning. And so um, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, hire Elaine Gaber Katz. And at the end of the, the year, because it was an evaluation year, what would we do? We started two programs. First one was the outreach program uh, for youth uh, in, the, uh, in the, uh, the Toronto School Board. In other words, that we would pay people to do this crazy work that I had been doing, uh, which was to bang on doors, and to do it a lot earlier so that the kids weren't so lost by the time we got them. And secondly, to address the adult needs um, of a community that, that uh, uh, on the opposite end, were really trying to bang down the doors. And this was a time in which adult education was unheard of. And we used uh, uh, things like uh, testimonies, as we heard today, um, to teach people um, to learn. But we also knew that quite often the, the reading and writing skills um, of adults had nothing to do with the intellectual skills and that there was much more than just the deciphering um, uh, uh, of the symbolism of the language. And so um, Elaine went off 
and lo and behold, we started East End Literacy. Now, I say this because, you know, a good idea never dies. And uh, in all of this, we were never able to put together the more important piece, which was that there would be lifelong learning for everyone, and that, that learners could be teachers, and um, that teachers could be learners. That's what the concept was here. It really was about uh, um, uh, insti uh, learning institutions coming together and helping to facilitate the community learning and experiences, and also coming together to learn from uh, those experiences. Today you saw some of those experiences. We'll be talking about lots more later. But I will say to you that the magic of Regent Park is not in the fact that finally, after all these years, we were able to change the, the bricks and the mortar. The magic of Regent Park is that it is, on the, it is built on the shoulders and on the spirit of the people of Regent Park. This spirit and these shoulders are embedded in this institution as an opportunity for them to share with each other their own learnings and their own teachings. And this center is the spirit or the heart um, of Regent Park and it is the key to what will make Regent Park work. So I welcome you to a wonderful center. I thank all of the sponsors and most of all I welcome you to my neighborhood, to our neighborhood, and to a neighborhood that since last March I call my home. What a wonderful place to live it is, and how much I enjoy uh, living with uh, my neighbors um, who know much more than I do, and who are willing to teach me all of those amazing stories. So thank you very much, and the reason that I remember is that just after I left there, I got pregnant and now I know how, how old my <laughs> daughter is. So I remember it exactly. So there you go. It only took 35 years. And what I'd just like to say is, what on earth took us so long?